principle of sin producing death. Down in verse 7, it says, or verse 6, excuse me, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. This reminds us of what Paul had said earlier in Romans chapter 6, verses 22 and 23. Verse 22 reads, But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. And verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Friends, it's very clear here that it is God's will that we would have eternal life. This is the gift that He wants to give us as the fruit of holiness. But The wages of sin is death. There is no other option. If we persist in holding on to sin, then sin eventually will work our ruin. Exactly. In other words, it is the result, it is the reward that is death. It is the ultimate consequence Mm -hmm. of sin, whereas the ultimate consequence or reward of holiness is everlasting life. And we see the same truth brought forth, Ty, in Romans chapter 2. In Romans 2, Paul, again, is in the context of Romans 1, the wrath of God. He's speaking here about the wrath of God in the context. And he says in verse 4 of Romans 2, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads thee to repentance. But, verse 5, after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasurest up thou unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. So what we have here in these two verses and the following verses is we have two positions. We have those Mm -hmm. who allow God's goodness to lead them to repentance, which leads to eternal life. And then we have those who resist God's goodness, and in resisting the goodness of God, they treasure up wrath against the day of wrath. What does this mean? How are they treasuring up wrath Mm -hmm. against the day of wrath by resisting the goodness of God? We don't normally think of wrath in this sense, but it's very clear that Paul is saying that wrath is something that stores up in the human soul like a reservoir. And the reason why wrath stores up in us is is because the wrath of God is that which is in direct proportion to our guilt and our condemnation. If we resist the goodness of God and we persist in a course of judgment and condemnation that Paul brings to view in verses 1 through 3, then in turn we set up in our minds a template of condemnation. As Jesus said, with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured again to you. The judgment with which we judge others will be judged back to us. In other words, friends, if we beholding the goodness and love of God, embrace His forgiveness and mercy for us. We then in turn manifest that mercy and goodness to others. But if we resist God's goodness, we have no other option but to eventually face the full weight of our own condemnation ourselves. And what this, how this condemnation comes, it seems here in this verse, is through a revelation of the mm-hmm. righteous judgment of God. In other words, God is going to reveal to each one a revelation of His goodness through the entire life, beginning to end. Mm-hmm. God is going to reveal how He has worked on the human heart, how He has worked in the life of each individual, how He sought, how He has drawn, how He has given His Son to die for that person. And as we look on to the goodness of God and we realize our course of action, in contrast to that goodness, it brings wrath, it brings condemnation, it It brings the fire, the coals of fire. Let's look at another verse, Ty, that really speaks to this. It's in Romans again, Romans chapter 12, and it begins here in Romans 12 with verse 19. Paul says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Verse 20, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. How is it that coals of fire are heaped on somebody's head by doing good to them when they do evil to you, by overcoming evil with good? 
It, There's a con. Go ahead. Well, it is through this revelation that God is going to bring of His righteous judgment, of His goodness, of His grace. And when we see that revelation, condemnation comes upon us because we see that we've resisted it. That's right. There's a contrast, in other words, between God's goodness and our sin. And that contrast is painful. Mm -hmm. There's only one way to resolve that contrast between His righteousness and our sin, and that's through forgiveness. If we don't partake of the forgiveness and mercy of God, we only have one alternative, and that is to eventually bear the weight of our own sin ourselves. In the context or in the contrast to His, the revelation of His righteousness and His goodness to us or toward mm -hmm. us, which makes that unbearable to the human mind and heart. Well, friends, our time has slipped by so quickly, we would sure love to cover this subject in greater detail. We're going to have some closing thoughts, so we want to ask you to stay with us just for a moment. It was over 12 years ago, I was traveling the countryside of Norway when I was given tapes of Thai preaching. Well, they proved to be such a blessing. And I'm so glad that you can have the blessing right in your own home. Lift Him Up is an ongoing television series designed to make God's Word clear and exalt Christ as the central theme of the Bible. James and Ty are eager to share with you as much as possible. That is why they prepared a series of study guides just for you. They want you to have these study guides absolutely free. All you have to do is call 1-877-585-1111 or write to Light Bears Ministry, Malo, Washington, 99150. Or email your request to lbm at televar, T-E-L-E-V-A-R dot com. Ask for the Revelation 14 study guides. So what we find here, friends, is the wrath of God is different from the wrath of man. We see God's wrath defined in Romans chapter 1 where He gives up the wicked. He gives up the lost to those things that they cling to, to those things that they've chosen, to those things that they refuse to let go of. Revelation chapter 16 reveals the same truth. In other words, those who receive the mark of the beast and refuse to walk in the light of the truth, who refuse to follow God and the everlasting gospel, God finally, reluctantly, not taking pleasure in their destruction, gives them up to those things that lead to death. Anything that has, is out of harmony with God, that is out of harmony with the truth of God's Word, leads to death and not to life. Mm -hmm. And God reluctantly acknowledges our choice. He gives us freedom of choice, and He will not violate that freedom of choice. There's a powerful scripture, James, that we could share in closing in Proverbs chapter 8, verses 35 and 36. These words are so clear. For whoso findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongs his own soul. All they that hate me love death. So there it is, friends. In those, those few lines, in the, that verse right there in Proverbs, we find the clue that, that unlocks for us an understanding of the wrath of God. God is long-suffering us would. He's not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. And He reveals to us His goodness time and time again. The waves of His goodness wash over us. But as we resist that goodness, someday our covenant with the grave is going to be disannulled and we're going to awake to face a divine revelation of God's goodness, a revelation that we can't hide from, and that revelation is going to overwhelm us with condemnation and guilt. It's going to crush out our life. It's going to be like coals of fire heaped upon upon our heads, mm -hmm. and we're not going to be able to stand in that revelation. Friends, the goodness of God must be our focus at this time as probation lingers and God through His Spirit calls to our hearts. The final end of the wicked need not be our end. There's refuge in Jesus Christ and the gift of eternal life is freely offered. And that's why we want you to continue to study the Word of God and continue to understand His love for you, especially as we near the close of this earth's history. God bless you. Until next time.